So I am approaching this as if most people are familiar with Flipgrid, this is uh, Flipgrid going further. So I wanted to show you some of the features about Flipgrid that are either new or that you weren't aware of. Um, so I'm not gonna spend a lot of time explaining what Flipgrid is or showing you how it works, but I did wanna just establish some basic vocabulary. So I am going to go ahead and present my screen. Okay. Um, oh, we also have on our YouTube channel, we have a Flipgrid playlist. And so this text slam will eventually be on the Flipgrid playlist. And then also I've linked some Flipgrid videos done by, I believe she's a high school teacher. Um, she has some really nice short Flipgrid videos as well that I've added to our playlist. So in Flipgrid, vocabulary are basically grids and topics. So grid is kind of like a big category. Maybe it's, if you're a middle school teacher, it's first period second period, third period, those are all individual grids. If you're an elementary teacher, maybe it's subject. So math grid, ELA grid, SEL grid. And then within those grids, you have topics. And so topics are your prompts. So I've created this one, it's a math grid. And within my math grid, I have a few different topics. So I've got a topic on measurement that maybe I would ask students to talk about what does measurement mean? Here's one called family math, and then here's one called that's time. So grid is like the big category. Within your grid, you can have little topics which are all related to the main grid, um, but then they're separate prompts, separate questions, okay? Um, when you create a grid, add new grid, there you have, in addition to giving it a name, you have to choose what kind of grid it is. So for teachers, 95% of the time you're creating a grid, it's just a school email. Um, Cause we have, your, we're G Suite districts, so easy as pie is just having students join with their Google email. We never need the student ID cause we have G Suite. So just always use school email. Educator learning community, that's more like if you want to um, share a grid with other teachers, maybe not even in our district, but that have either a Google email account or a Microsoft email account. So this does require either Google or Microsoft email. Um, so even I would say like with staff meetings, probably just use school email um, most of the time. And then here's the, the link to the actual grid itself. Now, one thing that's pretty cool though, that within your grid, so let's say my math example, which I did make a school email, so my students would just log in with Google, they'd be able to access any of like the topics in my grid that I can share with them. Now within a grid, even if it's like a school email grid, you can make a certain topic um, public, you can invite guests. So maybe you have your class grid, generally parents are not adding to the flip grid or, or even seeing it. But if let's say I create this topic called family math and here in my family math topic, whoop, I want the prompt is, how does your family use math together? So maybe I want different family members to actually add to this grid as well. And I can do that. So what I would do is I would click under actions, add topic guests. So if you add topic guests, it'll toggle on so this is a way to make this one topic easy for guests such as family members and content experts to access the specific topic. And it's really nice because it doesn't require any email whatsoever. They just click on this link, which you would share you know, in an email or Seesaw or however you communicate with, with families. And then they would click on the link and then they would be prompted to record their little um, recording, but then in order to submit it, all they need to do is type in their first name and then even just the last initial, and that's it. They can leave the email field blank, but a really fun way to get um, family members or people outside of your school uh, classroom to be able to add to a topic. Um, also, just a word about permissions. Any student, regardless of if their publishing permission is set to no, can use Flipgrid to its fullest extent. They can be on video, all of that, as long as it's within the, your walled garden and as long as it's not publicly posted. So in our family math example, you wouldn't necessarily have a student visible who is a publishing permission for no, 
because you're making this specific family math topic where guests outside of your walled garden are visible. Um, now, a little bit later, I'm gonna show you a way that you can connect with classrooms outside of our district. And there is a way for kids to still be involved even if their publishing permission is no. So I'll show you that um, in, a, in a little bit. So again, publishing permissions, all okay. Most of the time, these are not publicly posted or shared at all. And so that um, would, would work for any, any kid regardless of their permission. So also within a topic, um, you can do a lot to customize your topic. So let's say again, I choose this one. Um, oh, I'm gonna edit it. And so you can make, uh, it, the recording can last as long as 10 minutes. Um, you can have the videos be moderated so that they are, they're not automatically posted. You have to review them first. You can add a GIF or a photo or some kind of little image to indicate kind of what the topic is about, give a tip. You can even have an attachment if you want kids or whoever is doing your response to read something or look at something first. You can actually put in a link to whatever that would be. And then there's tons of ways to customize the actual video recording itself. So uh, title, you can have it display or not display how many views and you know, know your kids, but maybe some kids would kind of have like one kid has 10 views, one kid has two views, maybe that would cause an issue, maybe it wouldn't. But you can actually toggle that on and off. Um, video editing, so I'll show you in a little bit. You can now use Flipgrid, Flipgrid camera lets you actually edit, trim, rearrange video clips within like one Flipgrid video, which is pretty cool. Do you want students to be able to do that? And then also you can allow students to submit when they submit their video, they can actually send a link along with that. And I'll show you what that looks like. But an example of why you might do that is if a student has a transcript of their recording, or you know like a script that they were using and they want to attach that to their video you can make that possible and then likes and student to student replies as well um trisha i think that was you that was asking about feedback maybe here's the basic feedback that you can do so do you want to give students feedback on like a number scale for their ideas like the content and the performance so you can link that on and off okay thank you Yes, and then I'll show you too kind of what that what that looks like. Um, so let's say I want to add to a Flipgrid. I wanna show you guys some of the camera features that are somewhat new. Some of them are, are new just within the last few months. Some of them have been new throughout the year, but there's a lot that you can do. And then also everything that I'm showing you here, students can do it as well. Um, and so the other thing to note is that you can enable some of these little features and filters either before you start recording or while you're recording. So let's say I'm gonna start recording right now. And as I'm talking, I can give myself, you know, some different filters. I can actually type on the screen. And again, this is recording. I can add emojis. Uh, I'm gonna pause it here. And then you can also draw on the screen. So it's a lot of stuff that's similar to what you can do with Seesaw, just adding images, drawing, text. You can also have a blackboard. So if you wanna do some stuff with a blackboard, you can also change it into a whiteboard as well. And then this one is add a custom sticker. So if you have an image of your own that you wanna add in like your own little emoji, you can actually upload an image right in there, okay? You can also add sticky notes to your recording as well. So next. So something else, once you have a recording that you're ready to move on from, it now lets you trim it as well. So here I've got this kind of bar, like this blue bar that's surrounding my recording. I can actually drag this and actually crop it. So you can crop your video now 
and then confirm. And now the other cool thing that was in one Flipgrid video, you can add more video and kind of smash in a bunch of different things. So normally we think of Flipgrid as just if you talking, recording, press, submit, done. Here you can actually now do that, you know, speak, but then instead of having to be prompted to just submit, you can actually add more video. So I can add more video. And so again, I can just record more just like normal. Or if you click these three dots, they now have the option to screen record, which is brand new. And so it's in beta, which means they're still kind of testing it, but I, I tried it and that worked really well. And so I think what they're trying to do is they're realizing that people are using Screencastify, downloading the video, uploading it into Flipgrid um, and trying to do like use multiple tools to accomplish kind of one goal. So Flipgrid is trying to make it so you only maybe need to use Flipgrid if you want to record your screen and have that be part of your Flipgrid. And so it works just like Screencastify basically. Click that, start screen recording, choose which screen you're gonna share, gives you a countdown. Okay, now it's you can see the little red dot on my browser shows that it's recording whatever screen I'm on. So it's recording this Flipgrid screen then I can stop sharing. And now you can see on my screen here, this first bar is all of just the video that I took of myself. But then the second bar, this is all my screen recording. So now I've got kind of two chunks in one Flipgrid video. So I can even say, I wanna even add more. So I can click more, click those three dots, and then maybe I have a video clip on my computer and I can actually add that too. So I can just kind of keep adding up until 10 minutes. Um, 10 minutes, I think is the max number of uh, minutes that you can have for a Flipgrid. So let's say next. So in addition to being able to crop, like trim the front and end of the different video clips, I can say, you know what? I really want my screen recording to be before me talking. So I can actually grab this whole chunk, drag it, and now my screen recording section is first and my myself talking is second. So they've really made the Flipgrid camera a lot more robust where you can do a lot more things with it. Um, the other thing that I'll show you, which is just kind of fun, I'm gonna get rid of the whiteboard. I'm gonna clear all that stuff off. So there's, you can also stop and start a Flipgrid video. So you can, if you're you know, starting to record, um, hello everyone, you can pause it, go do something, come back. Um, I also saw an example from the Flipgrid people of how they use this to do almost like a stop motion thing. So like if you wanted to do stop motion with either yourself or like a little toy or something, you would just start the video and then And they were able to do some kind of cool things with like a stop motion. So definitely some things that, and here's that little chunk. Whoop. Yeah, so anyway, um, lots of fun things to experiment with with Flipgrid. So it definitely goes beyond just kind of recording your face. Um, so I would just click next. It makes you take a selfie. And then, Whoops, I think I just stopped sharing. Okay, grab that one more time. Okay, so then here, this is the screen where it's got my selfie and it's got my display name. I can give it a title. Here's where if I was a student and I wanted to submit my script, let's say, or some kind of supporting documentation, I would just drop that link in there and then I would submit my video. Uh, any questions or comments about any of the video features and functions? Has anybody used any of these? Um, okay. Well, I definitely suggest just playing around with it and seeing you know, why or how you might use some of the, the different features. But again, I do think Flipgrid is trying to be more of an all-in-one tool so that you don't need to go out and use this tool and then bring it into screencast or into Flipgrid. Uh, so the other thing 
Another thing I want to show you is something called, oh yeah, Julie says my students have added emojis and such. Definitely, they love that. Um, so mixtapes, mixtapes is exactly what it sounds. If you were around um, back in the 80s, we used to make mixtapes for each other. And so here is where you can create, you know, any number of mixtapes. Here's one that I created called Best of Dual Flipgrid. And so if you look at it, this is exactly what it sounds like. It's individual video responses that I've pulled in from different grids and different topics and I've put like smooshed them all into one. So maybe you have like an end of year, school year 1920, best of, you know, Miss Ward's class. Uh, and you just would go through all of your grids, all of your topics, choose some great responses, funny, interesting, whatever. And then you would just add them and then you'd have this one mixtape grid. So lots of different reasons. I'm sure you, you might wanna use that, but it's kind of a, a fun, fun thing to do. And then the way that you would add um, videos to that mixtape is let's say here I am, I'll go back to my grid. I'm gonna look at this one. And, oh, actually, let's just look at, whoops, sorry. Let's just look at, there we go. Uh, let's say I really wanted to add Allison's video response to my mixtape. So I would just go to actions, add to mixtapes. And then I only have one mixtape, but if I had multiple, I would just choose which mixtape I want. And just refresh. And now there's Allison's response. So pretty easy. Um, but this is something that is, I've always seen up at the top of Flipgrid, but I wasn't really sure what it was or what it did, but that's what it does. The other thing that is very cool that I've seen but haven't explored much is called Grid Pals. And I'm really hoping that some people try this out. Um, a few people this morning said that they were interested in trying it. But if you have used Empatico, it's kind of like Empatico, but without the need for the synchronous real-time meetups. So basically it started from a teacher who had a, form, a Google form that she was putting out on Twitter looking for people that would wanna have their class kind of be grid pals with her class. And Flipgrid, of course, thought it was a great idea. So now they've incorporated it as part of their website officially. And so what you have to do as a teacher is you have to toggle this on. You click grid pals at the top. You have to be active. You would click active. And then you would tell a little bit about your class um you know what kinds of things you're studying or anything that you would want somebody to know about you here's where you put in your grades and subjects and then also your location and then once you do that you're kind of open and available and then people can contact you and then you're able to contact people as well so you can actually search grid pals you can filter by grades and subjects and then here's just a big long list you can kind of scroll down to so I think it has a lot of potential, and especially since it doesn't need that real-time time zone sync up, um, I think it has some good potential. Let's see. Bill says, oh, first, Rebecca says two questions. Can we share our child's flip grid with others? I used to saw and share theirs with the speech teacher. And can we do this on flip grid? And how do we erase? In a yeah. Um, so first of all, If, if you were looking at, let's say, here's your topic, and let's say Alicia had an inappropriate response, I have a couple of actions that I can take. I just click actions, I can either hide her response, so I can maybe talk about it with her later, show her parents or whatever, or I can completely delete her response. So as a teacher, you can either delete or hide responses. Um, can, and you can actually, if you, let's say I wanted to share Alicia's response with her speech teacher or something like that, I can click share and I would be able to share it as a link. And I can also, whoops, I can also download her video. 
and actually share the video with another teacher as well. So there are some ways that you can share someone's individual response um, with other teachers. Does that answer your question, Rebecca? Yeah, it does, thank you. Okay. Yeah, and Jillian says, can we be good pals with another class in our building without having to be available to be contacted? Oh yeah, so I think, well, let's see. I think so, and what you might do instead of grid pals, because I think grid pals is more like being open. I mean, I guess you technically could both be on grid pal on grid pals and then kind of choose each other. I think another thing you could do though is is you can do something called have a having a co-pilot. Let me think about that. Alicia, yeah, we could, just yeah. Go we ahead, just Rebecca. did this. We just did this okay. with buddies. So oh. it was somebody in our class or in our school, it was our third grade buddies. And then we did co-pilots. Mm -hmm. And then the third grade teachers and myself were all in it. We did it for the first time two weeks ago and it didn't go as well because we pushed it out at the same time. This time I did it first and, okay. then, um, and then the third graders did it the next day and they responded to the kindergartners responses. Got so it, it. kind of helped. That, was better? Thing. that worked so much better. Then everyone got a response from somebody and the third graders didn't really say their responses, but they were responding to all the kindergartners. Okay. So that, oh, that worked well. And Julie, you said you do it as well? Julie Bowling? I think she said that. So yeah, let's say I wanted to have my math grid be the one that is like the co-pilot one. So I could just say add a co-pilot and then I could just invite someone else. Oh, and Kelly says, Holly and I co-pilot our flip grids. The students are seeing the whole fourth grade. Okay, cool. So yes, yeah, definitely happening um, in, in our district. And then if you wanted to go beyond our district, then you could do the grid pals. If anybody does grid pals, I'd love it if you let me know how it goes. Alicia? Oh. Yeah. Sorry, I, I hit leave the meeting instead of oh. undo my mic. <laughs> Sorry, um, we've been doing it on, um, we've been doing the co-pilot or triple pilot or however you wanna. So we have like all of the first and second graders right now doing an ABC scavenger hunt and they all post whenever, like it's all in our own daily uh, schedules, but then the kids post it whenever they want and then we go back and everybody can look at it. So it's really cool. Okay, that's great, we, yes. We've done a whole school one too. Oh, wow. Okay, great. Trisha, Alicia, what if I go? made a flip grid? Sorry, if I make a flip grid and I wanna share it with like Rebecca so, so she could use it in her class, would mm -hmm. I just share that with her and then she could just use my same flip grid with her kids? Or is there a way yeah. to do that? Yeah, right. So you would sh you would invite her to be a co-pilot. So you guys are now co-managing it and you both would share that link with your students. Oh, okay. And then, but would my students be able to see her students' responses then? Yes. And what if I didn't want that? Like, what if, like, because we, we just did one for Mother's Day. Like, the kids made a Mother's Day flip grid. And so Rebecca made it, but I had to remake my, remake the same thing for my kids. And we thought we could just share it somehow, but we didn't know how to do that. I was thinking the same thing, Trisha. <laughs> like, <laughs> how do, on Seesaw, you can make something and then you can share it with other teachers. I want. I made something for Mother's Day and I wanted to share it with Trisha, but if I shared that link with her, uh, then it was my kids in there too, and she didn't want my kids, she wanted just her kids. Yeah, yeah, so I think you can, if you, was it a grid or a topic, Rebecca, that you um, It was uh, both, okay. I used both of them. So I put so a like, video of like Mother's day like a mother's all these things that were in there and then underneath that they um responded to five different things they loved about their mom oh that's cool okay so i think if you wanted to share you could actually duplicate a grid so let's say oh, you made okay. this amazing grid that you want to share with someone else you would duplicate the grid and then i would Perfect. share that grid and so Perfect. you just wouldn't give that grid code to your students you would patricia would or whoever would just give the code to their students so same okay. as that grid with your little explanation and whatever little images or whatever you have in there yeah same, but then the the access for the students would be two different codes perfect okay. thank you so much 
Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Cool. That's a great idea. All right. So that's grid pals. And then this, I love this so much. This is called shorts. And now shorts are only for teachers. Students do not have access to make these, um, but they're basically just little ways for you to create videos for your students, but that are not within the context of a grid or a topic. So sometimes, you know, you want to just make a video to share with your students, either to give directions to them or to just do like a welcome, um, but not in the context of this whole grid. And maybe you want to be able to take that video and and download it and put it into Seesaw or share the link to the video or do something like that. Um, and you can, you know, you can do that. You could take a video of yourself with Screencastify or with Seesaw. There's lots of different ways that we have now to record ourselves doing a video. But the reason to consider doing it in Flipgrid and making it a short is because you have that Flipgrid camera that lets you have the filters and the stickers and um, you know you can do some screen recording and all of that. So basically there's, there's no trick to it. It's just you record a short and then you've got the exact same Flipgrid camera that we were just looking at before um, and then you would just record it. And I think it also has a 10 minute limit like all Seesaw or Flipgrid videos do. And then you can see here, it's not like connected to a grid or connected to a topic. It's just separate. It's just a little teacher video. So Flipgrid uh, said they recommend using these for, again, just like welcome videos or overview or just any kind of one-off video that you don't want necessarily to be connected into a grid and that you don't even necessarily need students to respond to. It's more like a way to yeah, just record yourself doing a, a fun video. Has anybody tried the shorts before? Okay, as you can see, I had some fun with it. It came out last summer. So, you know, you can add stickers and filters and, and stuff. It's pretty fun. And somebody this morning was saying that they make shorts and the kids really like it because they're just flashier. Um, okay, a couple of things that I wanted you to know that are really nice kind of functionality upgrades that I think Flipgrid has really been able to up their functionality game because they're purchased by Microsoft. And, you know, Microsoft has the power of, of money and engineering and, and computer science and all of that. So they've been able to really add a lot of functionality to their cameras and to kind of their video in general. And so there's a few things that are pretty great to know that are built right in. And so one of those is every video, there's nothing, no switch you have to toggle on. It's not a setting, it's just automatic. Anytime you have text in your description, you'll have this little immersive reader. And so students or anybody looking at it would just click this immersive reader and then the screen will come up. And then you can see this is the text, how do you tell time? And then wh whoever's looking at it would press play. And you probably didn't hear that, but I could hear it in my headphones. It just read it out loud. And then you can also click this little speaker settings and you can make it go slower or faster, have it be a male or female voice. And then there's even more stuff, especially if you had like long text, students could click text preferences. They could increase the size of the text, spacing, font, color, and you can see here it's, it's Microsoft, you know, powered by Microsoft. There's, I don't even know what this is exactly, but grammar options. So things that you can really do even more help with, reading preferences. Um, so there's really a, like a translator. So something to kind of look into um, if you think that your students might benefit from that, this, and at least maybe something to mention to your students, like, hey, this is here, this is how this works. So that's the immersive reader. It's the little blue button and that's what it does. Also, from the grid level, so not the topic level, but from the grid level, you can enable closed captions and that is pretty awesome as well. So what you would do is you would edit your grid and then it's under features. And then I think it defaults to being off, but you can toggle it on. So it displays auto-generated captions um, and then they're pretty good. And then you would just click update. Now, full disclaimer, I was showing this at, at the 10 a.m. and it, it wasn't working. Like, I don't know if they're having an issue at the moment or what, but 
I could not just get it to work. Um, but I do have one video where it does work. I was able to do it. I think it's in, it's in this one. Oh, to view it. So you can see it does, it did get, get the closed captioning, but you can see it said closed cap. So one thing that you can do is if you click on a, a, a response like this, you can actually go to edit and you can, uh, somewhere in here, you can actually edit the closed caption. Yeah. So you can edit the caption. So if it's like, you know, it's not closed cap, it's closed captioning. So especially if there's a video that you really want to make sure is captioned properly, but it's not, you can go in and, and edit that. Okay. And then also the question about feedback. So you again would click on someone's video and edit, and then here's feedback. So I can give video feedback where I'm just speaking myself, you know, on video and only Alicia sees it, right? And it's not visible to the whole class. I can also grade her on her ideas and performance, and I can leave text feedback as well. So I can uh, email the feedback, it'll go to her email, or I can copy the link and I can send it to her that way. And it says students can visit my.flipgrid.com to view the feedback. So it looks like there's a few different ways that you can tell your students that they can access the feedback if you're giving them feedback like this. But it, it is good to know, I think that there's ways that you as a teacher can do some assessment within uh, Flipgrid. Uh, edit, so you can actually edit some things about the video and then share. This is a link to the actual video itself. Um, I don't really know what a vibe is. <laughs> it says leave a vibe. So something else to explore. Uh, and you can see here's the closed caption. So those are kind of the main things that I wanted to show that I thought maybe weren't as obvious or weren't like so basic, um, but that I thought people might be interested in, in learning about. So is there anything that I missed or you had a question about anything I've shown or a way that you've used it that you wanted to share? I was just gonna ask the group, are there any like cool ways that you've used it with your classes, um, some novel ideas other than putting a presentation out there for the kids to then just respond to? And then I guess another question would be is, how are you getting students to re-engage with other students on that same grid? So Kelly, we had, um, one of the targets was asking and answering questions. And so we had done the video to read the story and then the kids had to ask, a, the, one day they had to ask a question on Flipgrid and the next day they had to pick one of the people listen to their question and then they, they had to respond to it by answering that question. Thanks, Julie, that's a good suggestion. Did you have to um, coordinate what kid was responding to another child or did they find a way to balance that out? So as Alicia presented earlier that one kid wasn't getting 10 responses and one kid was still left with nobody to talk to. Did you have to moderate that at all? We did not, and it didn't seem, with the first graders, they kind of all had their own groups, kind of. So it was the same kind, like nobody seemed to be left out that we noticed. Okay, thank you. Kelly, when we did it with our buddies, we just made sure that at the end of the day, when nobody had a response, that one of the three of the teachers that were on there with the co-teaching, we just responded. Okay, that's a good idea too, thank you. There's also this this thing called Disco Library, and I purposely didn't mention it because I'm still not 100% sure what it's for, but I think it's where you can just get, uh, like take topics that other people have created and then you can use them with your own kids. So like, this is a tongue twister challenge. So I guess the idea would be you can take this grid that's already made and then um, you can add it to your own library. 
So this could be an interesting way of kind of exploring. So you can say, who's your audience? So let's say we're elementary school. Subjects, let's say we want to do language arts. And then maybe I leave it at that. So opinion writing, if that's something that's interesting to you. Yeah. So this could be, a, it's almost like Seesaw Activity Library, right? Where you can filter by your age level and what, what kind of thing you're looking for. Um, but yeah, this could be a great, a great place to explore just to get some ideas because people are so creative um, and people that contribute to this kind of thing, I feel like are especially creative and have fun kind of figuring stuff out and sharing it with others. So that, and then I also put in um, into the chat a link to this. It's the Flipgrid Activity Center. So um, this is, I guess, ideas to spark your learner at home. So maybe this is almost ideas for families of what they can do. Um, so yeah, just some other, other ideas to explore. Um, but that's about it. So thanks everybody for coming. I'm gonna go ahead and drop the link to the CPDU form into the chat once again, if you need that. Um, if, if anybody does grid pals or if you do a short or anything that you would love to, to show me, um, I would love to see anything or especially like hear how grid pals goes, I'm curious. So yeah, Katrina. Oh, thank you. <laughs> yeah, thanks everybody for coming. I hope you guys have a good afternoon. Send me a hangout or an email anytime about anything.